Makers, today my make is all about the Distress Watercolor Pencils, and I am super, super excited about these. I'm going to talk a little bit more about these later in the month because I'm so thrilled that they are now part of the Distress line, and I know most of you are really thrilled about this too. So today I want to do a quick make uh, with one of the new Stampers Anonymous Unraveled CMS 452 stamps. So I'm going to use this stamp and I'm also going to use an older stamp that um, doesn't get a whole lot of love or used very often, but I'm going to pair them together and I'm going to use Slate and Stone CMS 299. I'm going to make a quick card and I'm going to use my Distress Watercolor Pencils for this uh, little card. <sighs> so, so, so happy these are part of the Distress line. So let's get started with our make. I'm beginning with a piece of Distress Mixed Media Heavy Stock and some Distress Spray Stain in Old Paper. And I'm just gonna spray that around a little bit. I'm also going to add some antique linen. And in the center area, I'm going to add a little pumice stone. Ooh. Went out a little bit from there. But let me find my water. Okay. Spray around it. Try and leave most of that dark in the center. This is what it looks like. I'm going to add a little more linen, antique linen, kind of around the edges. Let's try that. All right, this is what it looks like. And I'm going to try and stamp on this. So I'm not going to use a stamp platform for this. I'm going to just try and do this by hand. So we'll see how this works. What I'm trying to do is I want it to look like there's stone here and stone here. And like he's kind of coming, the mummy is kind of coming out of a tomb. And so I will be pressing this down like this and then over here a little bit uh, so let's see if I can get that to work out so I'm going to do this with archival ink around espresso for this one okay so I want we'll ink it up And part of me is feeling like, as I'm inking this, I'm thinking that I want to mask this area off a little bit. I think that will be the easiest way to do this. So hang on. Okay, I have this roll of masking paper that I got from Jugans. It's six inches wide and I don't know how long. So I'm going to go ahead and just rip some off. And I'm going to try... pretty much all I wanted. I'm going to set that aside for a minute and I'm going to wipe the archival ink off with my inky binky and put it back on my index so it's ready to go for the next time. And I want to dry this so I'm going to get out my heat tool. I have stamped the mummy in the middle of the dark area, 
Mostly that's just for some of the little things that are sticking out from his wrapping. So I've also stamped him in ground espresso and black archival ink on watercolor cardstock on the smooth side. So here's the rough side. I will be drying this and I'm going to be watercoloring with my watercolor pencils. And um, I'm going to be stamping. So he stamped in archival. I stamped the stone in archival. And then I'm going to right now very quickly stamp some of those spider webs all from all three of these from the unraveled so i'm going to stamp those on there and then i'm going to watercolor the background bricks and i'm going to watercolor our mummy very quickly and then we'll see where we're going to go from there <laughs> These cobwebs are stamped in hickory smoke. They're a little bit lighter than our main character is going to be, but they're still archival, so they won't bleed while we're doing our watercoloring. However, to make sure of that, we need to dry these with our heat tool, make sure everything is nice and dry before we go in with those pencil, watercolor pencils. All right, so let's get these dry and we'll come back and start watercoloring. the background colored in and I kind of went for different colored bricks in the wall um, and we still have a little bit of that showing through I probably should have stamped those after I watercolored simply because these aren't as translucent as distress inks they have a little opacity to them and then I have my little mummy here so i'm going to fuss cut him out and then i'll get ready to put him on here and we'll figure out a sentiment all right i should never do this but i'm going to stamp over the archival and see if the gray with some white picket fence and see if I can get those uh, cobwebs to stand out a little bit. So let's see if this works. If not, I'll redo the background, but you never know. 
and the gray might just look like a little bit of a shadow, which is what I'm hoping. And I'm doing CPR stamping on these. coming out of the tomb or the catacomb and now I think this one would be really cute and wouldn't it be fun if I could find some tiny candies to stick kind of in the cobwebs I think this is going to be too big to stick on here but maybe not might be able to go ahead and still stamp that trim it and stick it on there let me see if I can find some candy and then I will decide where I'm going next <laughs> bringing you up to date. I haven't attached the mummy yet, but I thought I would show you that I have colored him and I fussy cut him. And then remember I stamped him on the card base so that when I put him down, not only do I know where he's gonna go so that I can place everything else on the card, but do you see how all those little, the little extras that I don't have to cut out will show through once I get him on there and I cut out the little jack-o-lantern I cut a slit right here so that I could stick candy in I just cut this in half you don't need the whole thing so then you can just kind of stick those candies in that he has and here's the little handle that I am going to put over his hand and he is carrying his candy and he's kind of a mess and then as he's going through I stamped that uh, web that is on the stamp set in gray archival and then I went back over it with uh, picket white picket fence and then I also stamped on this with white picket fence it's not showing up too well and I think because I stamped it in the area where it was very very detailed and tiny right here and so it just kind of it doesn't show up as well uh, on there but you can still tell that it's kind of held within the web and then down here I did the same thing uh, I laid them down and then I stamped so that I could line up the webs and it would kind of look like these were all both kind of stuck in the 
spider webs and then these obviously aren't and he's just going to be kind of stepping on them as he's making his way through gathering candy and then over here i'm going to put the sentiment i'm here for the candy and i think i'm just going to stamp it and emboss it in white so that i just have just one you know other than this layer i think i'm I'm just going to stamp it on directly on the card and emboss it in white. All right, so I'm going to do that, and then I will probably sew around it very quickly and attach it to my card base. I'll come back with the finished product. But just take a minute and look at that color from those crayons. Isn't that wonderful? Absolutely love it. Here's the final make. So I have sewn around it. I have it on a top folding card base, just craft heavy stock, which matches the color scheme. And then you can kind of see the details here. I did decide to stamp in black uh, archival and then cover it with uh, black de detail embossing powder. But you can see that little spider has stolen the candy there. You can see him kind of coming out from the crypt and he has his little bit of candy there and even some more here. And then the spiders have taken over this candy in the corner. So I really enjoyed using the new Distress watercolor pencils that I'm so, so, so excited about. Have I told you I'm excited about them? Uh, you'll hear more from me uh, throughout the month of September about these watercolor pencils, but I just wanted to make something with them and share it here on my blog uh, so that I could share in the excitement of release day for these wonderful Distress watercolor pencils. So if you haven't gotten yours, I have a link to three different places where you can scoop them up and have a set or all three sets of your own. Thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, as always, contact me on my blog and I'll be glad to answer or clarify anything uh, that I can. So thanks so much, friends, and have a very crafty day.